Hi, everybody. It's John Kieran talking to Kieran Levis. We've decided that this would make a great kind of double act on an author. You know, Kieran Kieran. Um, it's, it's a real pleasure because uh, Kieran has written um, one of my books of last year. It's called Winners and Losers, Creators and Casualties of the Age of the Internet. And it is brilliant. It's wonderful case histories of all the companies we know, we love, we talk about Sony, Apple, but not just the successes, also the failures. And it is a great tale, but it's also got some really interesting, what are the rules of the game? What's happening? And why is it happening? You know, why has Google been the world's fastest growing company ever? What's going on there? And, you know, Apple hasn't always been successful, by the way. You know, it's a great drama. And um, already I've waffled on far too long in an introduction on a brain juicer bite that's supposed to be bite-sized. And so apologies, uh, you know, Kieran, tell us, tell us a little. You don't need just... to apologise to me, John. After all those kind words. <laughs> but go on, t tell us a, a little of the, you know what what it what, what were you trying to get across to you know to people the the new thoughts that that you felt you know the the marketing world at least should you know sit up and listen. Well, I've I've worked in new markets most of my life and most of my professional life, and I'd always been puzzling with this question. Well what makes new markets different from old ones and what does it take to be successful in them? And so I was tr basically trying to answer that question. What are the qualities that companies like Google and Apple and Amazon and Nokia have in common? Companies that have been, have been so outstandingly successful at creating new markets and for the most part, holding on to their leadership of them. So that Basically, that's the big question that I've tried to answer and quite a few others about the nature of new and disrupted markets. And and you and I kind of caught up when you spotted an article I'd written, uh, which was marketing has been that's the right. death of innovation, where I was just making a distinction that in trying to answer the same question between existing category innovations, which is 99, frankly, point something percent of all innovation, and genuinely new to the world categories, categories or brands that create a, a whole new behavior and a whole new category, and how the rules in the latter, new, you know, new to the world, just don't obey marketing theory. You know, they're maverick and glorious and small and fringe, and, um, you know, they, they break the rules, frankly. Um, and I know you were intrigued absolutely. by this, but, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the vast majority of, I mean, I studied about 20 companies in the research for winners and losers, and hardly any of them actually approached it uh, with a, an analytical marketing hat on. Um, they, they were pursuing a particular idea, which in most cases discovered a market. And, and that's the most important criterion for something becoming a radically new market, that the, that the idea of the pioneers, and there can be more than one in many cases, that those ideas and what they're able to offer to prospective customers turn out to meet a very big need that wasn't being met before. And, and, and in, in most cases, these, these pioneers in, in developing a technology or a concept or a service, um, the first and the only people to have spotted this need. Um, that, that they don't start by analyzing customer needs, but by a process of trial and error, they very obliquely, and our concept that you're very keen on too, John, they obliquely arrive at um, uh, a situation where suddenly there is, they find there is enormous demand for what they are offering. And most of the, the businesses that I've uh, written about enjoyed enormous growth, not all quite as much as, uh, as Google, but, um, but, but pretty astonishing growth. And I think what struck me is, is the... the the range of stories that you tell, you know, go right back to um, well, the, the the origin of Sony just after the war, um, as well as I guess Nokia's prehistory, you know, as well as their more recent telephone, you know, sort of history, and and telling as you as as you were hinting at there the the tale of how the pursuit often of a technical brilliance, something 
something you know very difficult and new to do rather than as you say the 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 deliberate analytical pursuit of a market that they'd identified then takes on a market and in the latter stages of the book then talking very you know kind of um, knowledgeably about Google but pointing out just how fast the Google growth has been compared, if you like, to you know the, uh, the 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 color televisions and the Sony Walkman. And do you want to? Can you talk a little about your sense of what's going on in the world? Is there something that's changed that can that's making it easier, or not easier, but it's possible to grow so fast, so big? Well, obviously, the the, the big thing is the is the way that we're so much more connected now. And the internet is perhaps the most important facet of that, but it's it's, it's clearly not the only one. Um, in fact, mobile telephony grew faster in Europe in the late 90s and early 2000s um, than, the, than the internet did um, in, in, in the United States. It was very, it was very much the, the internet, but we, we've been living through a number of revolutions. First of all, there's the personal computer revolution. Then there was the net revolution. Then there was the um, the, the mobile telephone one. J- just to mention, perhaps the three most important. But then, been lots and lots of others too. The applications that people have built on these technologies and 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 the different services. I know that momentum is one of the things that you you talk about. In the book, and I know it's it's the subject you're going to try and almost make that the hero of your next book. The notion of <laughs> just how long momentum takes and what is momentum. You know, the, the idea of feedback loops. Yeah, tell, I, tell us, oh, give oh, us a I, sneak preview. <laughs> I became really conscious of the importance of positive feedback loops in the course of of writing winners and losers because. All of the all of these companies that had these outstanding successes, in, including some that didn't manage to hold on to their leads, companies like AOL and Nets, Netscape, which didn't manage to establish themselves as long-term industry leaders, but all of them enjoyed this feeling of being on the most astonishing role. Everything was going right for them. Um, they were growing at a rate that, that none of them had ever had, had ever dreamed of. And it, it's the concept that engineers have developed of positive feedback loops that reinforce themselves and feed on themselves is a very useful one in understanding this kind of growth. And I think, indeed, all forms of radical change. It's the cumulative effect of thousands and thousands thousands of steps made in some cases by millions of different people uh, that add up to this almost uncontrollable growth um, the, 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 the simplest way to describe is, um, is, is, is momentum. And in some and- cases, the combination of feedback loops and network effects led to the most astonishing monopolies, the dom- Microsoft's domination of the markets for operating systems and, uh, and desktop software, uh, eBay's domination of online auctions and Facebook's more recent domination uh, of, so- of social networks. And to a considerable extent, Google benefited from that process too. Uh, it turns out that there's only room for one or two really big uh, search operations, and they are the most. Uh, the, the Google's brand is makes it by far the most attractive service to advertisers, and that accounts for it having been the fastest growing company in history. And whether it was the, you know the Renaissance of Italy, you know, kind of, if you go way, way back, or the Enlightenment movement in Scotland, presumably that's a feedback loop. It get, gets a reputation, it attracts the people who are interested in that, it then builds a sort of a, moment, a movement, and obviously the more, it, it's now just much more obvious that that's what's happening on the net, because it's happening almost in real time. We can see it, you know, happening as, as Facebook or Twitter or something grows, you know, exponentially every day. Um, um, yeah, uh, well, we, we can see it up to a point um, because quite often, to take a, a, a rather less happy example, the financial crisis that we're not really quite through yet, that 
we now know from from the the, the work of people like Gillian Tett and, and and others who've written about it so intelligently, those feedback loops were building up years and years before two thousand and eight when. Uh, Lehman Brothers went bust and the Royal Bank of Scotland found it. Um, and it was rather than being something that happened to the banking industry, it's something that many, many organizations were doing, taking progressively more and more risks, investing in products they didn't really understand until the whole process grew to a, a, a crescendo that nobody could control. And I think it's very often the way that in the early stages, nobody realizes the cumulative effect of all of these steps. So momentum in many ways is, is invisible. We only really notice it when it's starting to have enormous effect, when it's already accelerated uh, and is uh, operating like a runaway train to some extent. Well, Kieran. Brilliant. Thank you. And I hope that uh, the, the, the people that manage to listen into this get a copy of Winners and Losers before it becomes completely obvious that you are another one of the big thinkers with uh, best-selling books. And uh, and frankly, they should book you now um, before you become, um, you know, the kind of uh, like competing with the American gurus at $50,000 a time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Now's your moment, everyone. You're you too kind. Yeah, you're too kind. No, Thank I mean you very it. much. I, I it's been fun. Now, I mean it. You've got some terrifically, you know, interesting ideas, big ideas, and I and I think there's. Uh, I recommend it. Um, and look, thanks, thanks for chatting. Thank you. Bye.